micro tutoring. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the global atmospheric circulation model. You should be able to explain how circulation cells transfer heat energy around the world. So the sun acts as a heat source for our planet. Heat causes water to evaporate. This is the change from a liquid to water vapor, which is a gas. Heat causes air to rise, and this rise in air contains water vapor. The equator is a line which spreads around the center of the world. The line is imaginary, and in reality, there is no line around the center of the world. Now, the Earth's equator gets a bigger share of the sun rays than anywhere else in the world, and I'm showing you this here. This means a large amount of moist air rises here. After warm wet air has risen, more air from elsewhere rushes in to replace the air which has been displaced. Once the air has risen to the top of the atmosphere, it spreads out on top of the air which is rushing to replace it. During this time, the air loses energy and the water vapour condenses to form clouds, which eventually fall as rain, sleet or snow, and we call this process precipitation. We call areas where this process occurs low pressure areas. At low pressure areas, precipitation is common, so they tend to have wet climates with high rainfall. Eventually, as the air loses more energy, it cools down. The cooler air then falls back to the Earth's surface. This is shown here. We'll call these areas high pressure areas. Here, rainfall is much less common, so you tend to have arid climates, which is just another name for a dry climate. This is because there is a lack of warm, moist air, which means it cannot cool down and fall as rain. The fallen air then spreads out again and forms loops of air movement, which we call cells. It is this movement of the surface which we feel as wind. The Earth is a sphere and it has angles. Cells operate around the world and have names. The Hadley cell takes warm air from the equator at zero degrees and moves it 30 degrees north and south of the equator. It also takes cool air from 30 degrees north and south to the equator. The feral cell takes warm air from 60 degrees north and south and moves it to 30 degrees north and south of the equator. It also moves cool air from 30 degrees to 60 degrees and you can say all of this on this diagram. And finally the polar cell moves slightly warm air from 60 degrees north and south and moves to the poles of the earth and these are at 90 degrees at the top and bottom. It also moves cold air from 90 degrees to 60 degrees. Now, remember all of this applies for both the north and the south of the equator, and you can see that here. The top and the bottom have all three of those cells. Now, by the end of that, you should be able to explain the global atmospheric circulation model and explain how circulation cells transfer heat energy around the world.